Inside this video right here, I'm gonna walk you through the three main EMT lessons to help you get prepared for EMT school and for EMT National Registry. These three lessons trip up students. Watch till the end of this video. They will not trip you up anymore. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach here. If you're watching right now, hit the like button down below, smash that like button, hit subscribe down below as well, tap that notification bell, and very important here, make sure to watch this entire video. Hit like, hit subscribe, but make sure you watch the entire video. Now today we're talking about the three things that trip up EMT students that are in school and studying and preparing for your national registry. Now, number one, I'm gonna go over today, full lesson, heart blood flow, the four types of shock, and finally, sympathetic and parasympathetic. If you watch this entire video right here, you will never ever get tripped up with these topics ever again, and you will get so confident by watching this video over and over again that you'll be able to teach other people what I'm about to share you here once you have it down cold. Now, here we go. All right, everybody, we're starting off with heart blood flow. Now, there's a few things here I wanna show you that's so important for you to understand this heart blood flow. Now, here it is. Now, first, I wanna start off with, what is the SVC and the IVC? What does that mean? So first, we have the SVC stands for superior vena cava, and then we have the inferior vena cava. Now, superior means I should put it above, I should put it up here. It's so great, I should put it up. Superior means up, above, okay? Now inferior means, I don't want that. I'm gonna put it down, I'm gonna put it in the garbage. Inferior is down, okay? Superior, inferior, okay? Now vena, that sounds like venous. That sounds like veins. That sounds like the venous system, right, okay? Now, why is that important? I'm gonna tell you right now, look here. When we're talking about heart blood flow, artery, think away from the heart, vein or venous system towards the heart. Where's this going? Blood flow towards the heart, and that blood flow is deoxygenated blood. It's blood that's already been passed off. What do you mean, Evan? Let me explain a little bit more for you. Hang on, hang in there. The heart is the pump of the body, okay? The job of the heart is to pump blood around our body. We have cells all over our body. So we use the blood vessels as the pathways, the highways, the body to get the blood and the oxygen to our cells, okay? Now the lungs, when you think lungs, think of oxygen. We breathe in oxygen, right? That's how we get oxygen to our body. So the heart has to link up, has to partner up. The heart and the lungs have to be together and become partners. Does that make sense? Okay, now, how, how do we get the heart to partner up with the lungs? That is heart blood flow. That makes sense? Okay, now let's dive in a little deeper. So right over here, when blood returns to the SVC and the IVC, that is blood that does not carry oxygen anymore because it already gave it oxygen and veins go towards the heart. So the whole pattern's restarting again. And here we are. Now you're learning. The blood enters the right atria. Now let me give you a pearl about the atria and the ventricles. The what? The atria, right atria, left atria, ventricles, right ventricle, left ventricle. Atria think they're smaller, they're weaker, they're not as strong as the ventricles. So the atria is gonna pass the blood down to the ventricles, and then we're gonna give the ventricles, each one, a very important job to do. They'll each have a separate job, okay? Now we're gonna go from the right atria, it's gonna pass that blood off to its stronger ventricle, okay? Through the valve, 
This is a tricuspid valve, tri. Goes through here. Now, I'm gonna give the right ventricle a job to do. Its job is to find the oxygen. It needs to get oxygen for the heart. That's gonna be the job of the right ventricle. We need to get oxygen. So, and goes, okay, how do I get oxygen in this blood flow? Well, it's not here. I gotta go to my front of the lungs. Right. But how are we gonna do that? Well, I told you arteries are a way. Pulmonary artery. Okay? So we take the blood flow, we go like this. Here we are. And there's your pulmonary artery because arteries go away from the heart in heart blood flow. So now what do the lungs have? The oxygen at the right ventricle needs to actually complete the job. You with me? Okay, so let's go ahead and that's great. The right ventricle completed its job and got, it got the oxygen, great. Well, now we use the pulmonary artery to go to the lungs. What do we do now? How do we get that blood flow back to the heart so it can, so it can what? Pump blood to the rest of the body. How do we do that? Veins go towards the heart. We create the pulmonary vein that goes right here back towards the heart. You with me? So now we're in the left atria. And what did I tell you about atria? They pass down to their ventricle because the ventricle has a job to do and it's stronger. Right. We go through our mitral valve here. I'm just going to put MIT. Now we're here. Left ventricle. I'm going to give it a job to pump blood to the rest of the body, and it's going to partner up with the aorta to do just that. My friends, that is heart blood flow. We're now going to dive in. We have two more lessons. If you enjoyed that, remember, you want to watch this entire video. We're moving on to the four types of shocks. Now, here we go. Let's get into the four types of shock you got to understand and know. You're going to get this right now, so hang with me. So remember, shock is hypoperfusion. If I'm perfused in my body, what that means is there's blood and oxygen going to all the cells in my body. Right. Okay. Hypo is not enough. Hyper is too much. So if I'm hypoperfused or I'm in hypoperfusion, I'm not getting enough blood and oxygen to my body, which means I'm in shock. We're going to find out right now which one of these shocks that we may be in. That makes sense? Okay, great. Now, here we go. So, first, we have cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic shock, what that means is it's the heart's fault. The heart itself has caused that type of shock. It could be an MI, a heart attack, right? So a coronary artery that supplies blood flow to the heart is, is blocked. It's, there's too much plaque in there. That's an MI, okay? CHF, active CHF, that's congestive heart failure, right? So that patient, they're in cardiogenic shock because the heart either had a heart attack or an MI. It's the heart's fault that the patient is in shock right now and not perfusing their body. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Next thing we're gonna talk about here is obstructive shock. So with obstructive shock, that means there's a stopping of blood flow in the body. Now let me explain. If I am here and I get shot in my right chest, my lung is gonna collapse. And why is it collapsed? Because the air pressure, there's air from the outside world entering here, going in here, pushing on the lung, pushing the pressure over. What's over here? My heart. Well, if the pressure pushes on my heart, my heart's going to fail as a pump, which is going to stop blood flow. That's obstructive shock. Did the heart do anything wrong? Heart did nothing wrong. But blood flow was stopped. That happens in the pneumothorax. That happens in pulmonary embolism. If I block the pulmonary artery, blood flow stops. Did the heart do anything wrong? Nope. It's a stopping of blood flow. Cardiac tamponade. Well, around the heart, there's a problem. 
a trauma, a pressure. Heart's fall? No, it's around. But it stops blood flow. You follow me? That's obstructive shock. Now, the, the next two we're going to talk about, I have distributive shock and hypovolemic. So here's distributive. And I'm going to put in the screen here the three types, okay? We have sepsis, anaphylaxis, and neurogenic. So these three types are the subtypes under distributive shock. So there's four major types of shock, but distributive has three subtypes. Okay, I just talked about those. Now, I want to go through each one individually, then I'm going to give you the big pearl that you got to know about distributive shock. So sepsis means you have bacteria in your blood. If I have pneumonia, if I have UTI, and then that bacteria says, you know what, I'm going to enter the bloodstream. I have now bacteria in my blood, I'm septic. That gets worse and worse and worse. You enter septic shock. It's a systemic infection in the body, okay? Now, the next piece, anaphylaxis. If I just have hives on my arm, I'm having a simple allergic reaction. Take some Benadryl and watch out, okay? Now, if I have hives and nausea and vomiting, hives and wheezing, hives and strider, if I have hives and all that stuff, two or more body systems means I'm in anaphylaxis. When that gets really bad, which it will, these things continue if you don't treat the patient, you enter anaphylactic shock, right? Could be an insect, could be a medication, could be a food, right? So that's anaphylaxis, okay? Now, the final piece is going to be neurogenic. That simply has to do with the brain and the spinal cord, okay? Now, the final piece here we're going to talk about is hypovolemic. But before I do that, you're going to want to stay and listen to me here. This is the big pearl with distributive shock. With distributive shock, they are not able to compensate like the other types of shocks. The epi, the norepi, that gets released in your body when you're bleeding out to try to keep you alive, that doesn't happen in distributive shock. So what happens is, instead of your blood pressure being, let's say, 80 over 60, it's 80 over 30, 80 over 40. So what happens is, you have that abnormal vasodilating of your blood vessels. You get sick very, very fast with distributive shock. So when you hear distributive, think an abnormal blood pressure, an abnormal vasodilating. They cannot compensate like the other people can, okay? Now, finally, is hypovolemic. Hypovolemic has to do with blood loss, fluid loss, okay? So I can be severely dehydrated, hypovolemic. I can bleed out, hypovolemic, okay? It's got to do with blood or fluid loss. It's the classic shock. I get shot, I'm bleeding out, hypovolemic. Make sense? This right here, is your four types of shock. Keep watching this over and over again so you have it down cold. And let's move on now to the next piece, which is sympathetic versus parasympathetic with our nervous system. Here we go. Everybody, you've made it to this part of the video. We're talking about sympathetic versus parasympathetic. Now let's start off with this. The sympathetic nervous system, I want you to think of as fight or flight, like you're running for your life. The parasympathetic, I want you to think about laying on the couch and you're resting and digesting. Two different things, two polar opposites, okay? That's why I want you to get your, get your brain thinking about these two nervous systems in our body, okay? Now, here's a second thing I want to tell you about, okay? You might not know this. The sympathetic nervous system inside our body we actually have epinephrine and norepinephrine that gets secreted in our bodies when we go into this fight or flight mode. That's what causes a lot of this stuff. Does that make sense? Okay. Remember that when I go through this and it's all gonna click. So let's, here's the whiteboard, okay? So we have sympathetic on over here, parasympathetic over here. Now let's start with the eyes. Another way of looking at this is sympathetic and parasympathetic man. So we have sympathetic man over here. 
Think about a man on cocaine. Parasympathetic man, think about a man on heroin. Two different people. Look at the reactions. They're very similar to somebody who may be on drugs. If you think about it like that, you'll always remember it in your brain. So a sympathetic response with the eyes would be right here, which is a dilation, a dilated pupil. With parasympathetic, it would be constricted. Think about it. If I'm running for my life, would I want pinpoint pupils? <laughs> no, I don't want that. I want my eyes open, right? Now we move on from there, we have the heart. So with the heart and the lungs, here's what I want you to think about. If I'm running for my life, well, wouldn't my heart rate go up? Right, it would, correct. If I secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine, my heart rate goes up, that makes sense, right. So my lungs relax. Wait a second. Is that why we give epinephrine to people with asthma and anaphylaxis? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. For those effects. Is it clicking now? Are you connecting dots? I hope so. Now, if I'm running for my life, do I really need to worry about my stomach and my liver and my intestines moving things along? No, I don't. So those uh, processes in the body are inhibited. So I call that off. That makes sense? Okay, great. Now with parasympathetic, with the heart and the lungs, the lungs constrict a little bit, not like you're having bronchoconstriction, they just don't relax. There has to be an opposite to relax, so we call that in medicine constrict, okay? Now with the heart, what's gonna happen is we're gonna lower our heart rate because we're resting and digesting, right? Well, digesting, that sounds like right here. Stomach, liver, and intestines are now on, and we're moving forward with that GI process. Does that make sense? I hope I cleared this up for you. Hey, if I did, put a comment down below and say, Evan, paramedic coach, you've cleared it up. I got one more message for you. Everyone, I'm so proud of you for taking action on this video. We went through three major lessons to help get you through EMT school and help you pass those national registry boards, everyone. Proud of you. Now, if you enjoy these lectures and you want more, I've actually put together an entire video vault of over 180 plus videos and growing. There's a lot more than just three topics in EMT school and national registry. There's a lot more to go over. So I've created a video library. You can see the link down below. I actually give you lifetime access to the course. One payment, you get a lifetime access. You can click the link down below. It's prepareforems.com. It's my life's work. And you also get access to our private community group where we have in the thousands of students taking action on the course materials and getting this stuff down for school and for national registry. And for somebody out there right now who's getting ready for school, get access to that because you'll be more than prepared. My friends, Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope I cleared up these three topics so now you can pass it on to your fellow classmates and they can understand this, which is going to decrease failure rates in EMS. And that's my job here as the paramedic coach. I'm always here for you. Get access down below to the video course and I will see you next time. Gotta go, take care. Don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school, from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions. Like, go for it. You could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. I went through it. I, I spent the time and money in other areas. And I'm, I'm just going to let you guys know that uh, this was everything I was searching for the whole time. The first couple of videos I watched, um, when I noticed it, it just, I, I just immediately started connecting dots. Um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. If you're looking for a different way to to learn and absorb the content um, in a, in a non-threatening way, um, in, a, in a caring way, then I would absolutely recommend the program.